Discover the secrets to closing sales with an open heart. Welcome to the Soulful and Social Summit. I'm Katya Rosanen, your host, committed to helping spiritual entrepreneurs share their stories, shine their light, and succeed on purpose. Joining us today is energy healer and heart-centered sales expert, Anne Hessian, who brings a wealth of experience and insight on heart-centered Centered Soulful Sales. Welcome, Anne. I'm really excited you are here to join us today. Me too. This is going to be fun. And before we dive into the heart of the matter, and I'd like to also know a little bit about your relationship with social media. How has social media played a role in shaping your remarkable success? Well, um, for me, it's primarily been Facebook that that's been the the platform that I've been on, and it has um, it has really uh, made a big difference in I think in people being able to get to know me and also creating community. Like I really do a lot with having a, a Facebook group that is for you know healers and soulpreneurs and a place that they can come to to learn about doing business in a way that feels authentic and aligned for them and feel like you know they're not trying to. Um, Oh, like, you know, mush themselves into, into tight ways of doing business that just don't work for them. And I found it to be a really great platform for that. So um, whether it's from doing, doing challenge, free challenges, which I've done a lot of, but also just sharing, like just sharing who I am and what I'm up to. It's really been a very powerful way to help people um, learn to know me and see whether I'm, you know, like the mentor, I'm the expert that is going to make a difference for them. So it's really been a big part of this business from the beginning. Yeah. And we are totally eager to dive into your expertise and allow me to emphasize that Anne possesses this unique blend of energy healing and heart-centered sales expertise, which makes her kind of like a unicorn. And she helps healers and soulpreneurs who have amazing gifts for the world but are allergic to sales and selling. And as an intuitive coach and energy healer with over 30 years experience in transformational healing and sales expert who personally sold millions of dollars of products and services, she's uniquely qualified to help healers and heart-centered business owners transform their relationships to sales so that they can confidently and easily grow their business without feeling fake, pushy, or salesy. And I am so excited, and I'm sure our audience is also eager to learn from your wisdom. So the stage is yours, and. All right, wonderful, wonderful. So I am um, excited to share some of what I've learned, some of what I've learned with y'all, and um, I'm going to do everything I can to make the next half hour or so life changing for you. That's my goal. All right. So I hope you're up for that. And the first thing I want to do is actually just share a quick story with you um, about someone I worked with, a client of mine, Ladina. And when she first came to work with me, she was trying to get her energy healing practice going. She described herself as someone who like cringed at the thought of selling anyone anything. And you guys can relate to that. Um, and she was doing a lot of sessions for a lot of people, but she was maybe being paid for like one or two out of 10 on them, right? So just giving away her amazing services way too much. But what she shared with me is that she was, she was scared of being seen. She was scared of asking for money for what she did. But... After our time working together, shifting her whole relationship to sales and, and to getting paid for her wonderful work. Um, so after doing some, that, some of that inner work and also helping her learn the skills of heart-centered sales, because sales really is a set of skills. Um, for just three months later, I talked with her again and she told me she was averaging 12 paying clients per week. She was charging uh, more than double what she'd been thinking she could ever charge. And the best part she told me was she actually enjoys sales conversations now. They're fun for her. So that kind of transformation from, right, from being scared to ask anyone to be paid to where those conversations are actually fun, that's like a life changing, right? And to help someone going to go from being afraid 
to ask to be paid at all to to that where it's fun and they're enjoying them and finally being paid what they want that's what gets me up in the morning right that's what um that, that's what i'm here to do i'm here to support the healers and the coaches so they can go out and and heal and change the world so let me tell you a little bit about my story just so you have a little context for me and who i am so uh, as Kachi said, I am a medical intuitive, I'm an energy healer, and I'm a sales expert, and I do have no, you know, several millions of dollars in sales to my name. I built my own energy healing practice, doing one-on-one -on -one sessions to over six figures, and I did that in a little over a year um, from when I first started to promote it. Um, and I did, devote most of my time now to helping other healers like Ladina and also coaches create the successful business that they want doing the work they love to do, right? So all of that sounds great. And it is. I have a really successful business doing what I love to do, which is what I want for all of you. And the path to get here wasn't a, you know, smooth ride. I want to share a little bit about that from my own journey. So um, if you can imagine this, it's late July, 2007. And my husband and two daughters and I were driving home to Rhode Island, where we live, from my family reunion at the farm where my grandfather grew up in Western Massachusetts. And it's been a great day, but as we we're driving home, we realized that we don't have enough gas to get home. So my husband pulls into a gas station and convenience store to get us some gas, not to fill the tank. We don't have enough money to fill the tank. We just need to get enough to get us home. And of course, if you have kids, you know what happened next, right? The girls peep up from the back seat and they see the convenience store and they're like, mommy, I'm so hungry. I'm hungry. Can we get a snack? I'm so, I'm so hungry, mommy. Can we get something now? And the reality is there's, I don't know, $15 in our bank account. There's nothing in my wallet and we have to get gas and we can't get both. So I have to tell them, I know I'm sorry. I, I can't, you can't, you're going to have to wait till we get home. Now there is food at home and my kids do get fed that night, but I'm telling you the whole rest of the way home, all I can think of is I just had to choose between getting gas and feeding my kids. I don't know if any of you out there, you know, have had that kind of experience, but it stinks. And at the time I was trying to make a living as a coach and I was failing clearly. Um, but the reason I'm sharing this moment with you is because it was one of those moments and I'm, I'm sure you can all relate to this. There's, there are certain moments in life when life gets divided between how life was before that moment and how life is after that moment. For This was one of those moments for me. It finally kind of knocked me out of what I can only now see as like denial that I was in thinking that it was enough that I was a good coach and that I had a good heart and I wanted to succeed. I, I had to accept the fact that none of that was going to make any difference if I didn't learn how to sell what I did and no one was going to come sell it for me. Like it wasn't going to happen. So I got it. Like I have to learn how to do this. The problem with that realization is at the time I hated selling. I mean, the idea of a conversation made me nauseous, uh, just, ugh. and up until that day, that moment, that like, this has to stop moment, um, I had always let that stop me, but that moment changed me and it made me really dig deep into who I am. And here's what I mean by that. Um, like probably every single one of you listening, I would say that I'm, I'm like a seeker, you know, I'm a person who's interested in going deeper and examining my limiting beliefs and freeing myself from them. And I, I just finally got that I had to do that about my relationship to sales, just like I had done it with other things, right? Um, so that one decision to be willing to let go of my preconceptions and all the things that I knew about sales and how it was like this awful thing, that ended up being one of the most life-changing decisions I ever made. It also gave me courage to take an action that I never thought would be something I would do. So you want to know what it was? Here's what I did. I went to that, after that day at that gas station, I went and got a sales job. I actually went and got a 100% commission only sales job. 
And I did the sales training they provided at that job, like my life depended on it. And I started getting better and better at it. I was like, if I'm going to learn this, I want to get paid. I want to get paid while I'm learning it, right? So I did that training. I read books. I went to other trainings outside my job. And I discovered that there were actually things that I really liked about sales, like helping people solve their problems. I'm guessing some of, some of you out there listening, like you, you also like people solve, helping people solve problems. And that's a huge part of sales, right? And I ended up actually going and getting another job at this company called Business Breakthroughs International which was owned by um, this amazing marketer named Chet Holmes and his partner, Tony Robbins. And at that company, I learned this whole new level of sales skills, right? It was like trial by fire. I, I, I remember I literally threw up partway through the hiring process, but I made it through and I actually became one of their top salespeople and then a business coach for them. And on that journey, I learned some really wonderful skills that I still use to this day. But I also learned a lot about what I don't like sales to be, that stuff that doesn't work for me and wouldn't work for you either. Over those years, I developed my way of doing heart-centered, soulful sales, which is the only kind of sales for people like us. And because of that, I, I now have a multi-six-figure business doing energy healing, doing coaching, helping other healers. Uh, and solopreneurs and coaches create their success, right? And that also means that I get to wake up to news like this. So I'm going to share my screen for a moment. And you guys. No, like I said, I know I get to wake up to news like this. You shifted everything for me. Your course changed my life. This is from a client of mine, Rebecca. Went from basically nothing, no regular patients to being fully on track for 100K a year more this year. Just took off within two or three months of working with you and shifted everything. And this one, because of the work we've been doing together, it's early October. I already met my annual goal this year. I have a whole quarter left and I already met what I wanted to make this year. Can't thank you enough for the difference that you made. So I get that, right, to know I'm making that kind of difference in the world. And going on that journey that I did and learning what I did that I'm going to start sharing with you also has given me this, among many other things, this complete joy. I just want to sh share some, some pure, pure joy with you, okay? It means I get to do things like this. This is me and my husband and those same two amazing, awesome daughters of ours a year ago in Hawaii. On Maui now, I actually lived on Maui in my 20s, and it's like my spiritual home. It's like the most sacred place on the planet for me. But I had never been able to show it to my family. That was just completely, I, there was no way we could afford that for most of, you know, most of my marriage and most of the kids' lives. And I was able to take us all there for two weeks. We flew first class, and we had two weeks at the most like sacred place on the planet for me. And I'm sharing that with you guys because that would never have come true without the journey that I just shared with you. And that started with getting out of denial about the fact that I had to learn sales. So I just shared my story with you and how I did it the hard way with the nausea and the trial by fire, remember that? And the years of figuring out what worked for me, that is what I did. I'm hoping you would like to learn it like the much, much, much easier way, right? You up for that? So you don't have to go through the years of what I did. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to distinguish like underneath the rock, what your fundamental relationship to sales is. And I'm going to show you the biggest mistake most people make over and over at the very beginning of what could be a great potential sales conversation. Um, but that making this mistake like kills it off before you even get started. And more importantly, I'm going to show you exactly what to do instead. <laughs> All right. So let's jump in. Remember I talked about being, you know, kind of like a seeker, right? Someone who goes under the surface. We're going to lift up that rock, see what's underneath. Here's what I've learned from over 10,000 one-to-one conversations with um, energy healers and coaches. What I've learned is most healers, coaches, heart-based business owners have a hidden subconscious belief, right? And that you could be expressed this way. It's a belief that you have to be 
someone else, and by the way, someone you don't want to be, in order to sell what you do. Okay. Again, it's like it's subconscious, right? So here's how that might show up. You know, let me know if this resonates for you. You're talking with someone and you're getting along great, right? There's this great human to human connection happening. You're both interested in what you're talking about, and then something happens. Maybe they say they're interested in finding out more. Maybe they ask you what you charge, right? Sometimes that's just a huge trigger for people or they ask about how to work with people. Whatever it is, suddenly it's all weird, right? So check in, see if that's sounding familiar to you. You don't know what to say. You're like all stuck in your head. You're like, now I'm supposed to sell them. What am I supposed to do? The bottom line is you're not present anymore, right? You feel like you have to be someone else. And to that nice, cool, really interesting person that they were really enjoying talking with and even thinking they might want to work with, so that would be you, that person's gone, <laughs> right? Because unbeknownst to you, undistinguished, there's this belief that to sell, you can't just be you. Okay. So why is this happening? There's definitely more than one reason, including lots of subconscious beliefs about sales and um, about ourselves, right? And uh, worthiness and all that kind of stuff. That's where the healing work uh, that I do with my clients comes in. But right now we're going to talk about the biggest reason right in the moment why this happens. Right. And that is, that is most healers and coaches and heart centered entrepreneurs. They just don't have yet the skills you need. Like you just don't, you're missing the skills that this situation requires. One of the biggest pitfalls I find that most people uh, fall into is simply not understanding that this one simple fact, heart centered sales is, it's just a set of skills that anyone can learn. You learn the skills of what you do. You learned how to read and write. You learned how to ride a bike. You learned to play an instrument or play a sport and you can learn sales skills. It's not magic. It's just a set of skills, period. Right? So here's an analogy. Imagine you're a musician. Let's say you play piano. The pianist or other musician, they practice their scales and arpeggios or chords over and over and over, not because they're going to play scales and arpeggios on stage, but because they are developing the skills to play the piece of music, right? And once they have those skills, it's then it's easy to learn a specific piece of music because you have the skill level to learn that. So you do all of that, the scales, practicing the piece, so that when you go out on stage, you don't have to be concerned about what's the next note or whether or not you're gonna be able to hit it. You know the note, you know you're gonna hit it fine because you've got that skill. And that leaves you, because you have the skill, it leaves you free to be fully present, to be yourself, to allow the music to just come through you and free to really be with the audience in a way that you could never be if you were trying to remember what note to play next or you didn't have the skills to hit it, all right? And sales is just like that. When you have the skills, then you're free to be you. You're free to be fully present, totally connected with the other person, really clear about what to ask them, just having a real conversation to serve them and help them get what they want. So can you see that as much as you might want to be yourself, if you don't also have the skills that the situation requires, then it's kind of like walking out on stage as the performer. And not only do you not know this song, you don't even know how to play chopsticks, right? It's not going to be a great experience for you or them. So can you see by not understanding these are just skills you can learn and therefore you didn't go out and learn them? In every potential sales conversation, it's like you've been walking out on the concert stage on your own without any of the prep you needed and wondering why it wasn't working, right? So if you can relate to that feeling, you're going to love this next part because we're going to shift that right now. It's not your fault. It's just no one ever taught you how, right? That there's a way to do sales that feels authentic and good and based in your heart, right? And I'm here to remedy that. So I'm going to teach you a really important skill right now. I'm going to lay out for you one of the biggest mistakes that you've probably been making. And I, I'm also going to teach you the exact skill that you need to turn it around for good. Okay. I'm going to show you a place where a prospective client actually lays a trap for you 
although they don't mean to, and they don't know they're doing that. Um, but you're probably falling into the trap almost every time. I call it the tell me more trap. And here's how it goes. You are talking with someone and they express interest in finding out more about what you do, what you offer. It could be just like a casual setting, like a party, or it could be they were referred to you. It doesn't really matter. It's just at some point they say some version of those magic words, right? The words you've been wanting to hear, they say something like, oh, that sounds really interesting. Tell me more. And your brain's like, woohoo, hallelujah. They're really interested, right? They want to know more and you're so happy. The thing is, that is where you make the mistake because you're missing a skill, right? So you end up falling right into the trap that they didn't know they were setting you. You start to tell them more. If you get nothing else from this training, please get this. Usually the worst thing you can do when they say, oh, tell me more about that is to jump in and start telling them more. Now, that might sound crazy, but it's going to make perfect sense in a sec. Here's why. You don't know why they want to know more. You don't know what of all the things you could tell them they actually have any interest in at all. And without knowing why they want to know more, the odds of you giving them the information they want and that will make a difference for them are like slim to none. I mean, think about it. How many of you listening, how many of you, you absolutely love what you do? Like you love it, right? I love what I do and I can talk about it. I can geek out about it with, with other dealers for hours, right? And it's probably like that for you. And for that reason, you could probably easily talk for like six hours about what you do and how it works and where it came from and how much you love it and how you got trained and how long you've been doing it and all the amazing results people get and on and on. And, you know, just be honest, because I, I cannot be the only person who has done this. Their eyes kind of start to glaze over at a point. And that's when they say something like, um, thanks, that was interesting. Or thanks for answering my questions. I guess I'll let you know if I want to find out more. And everyone's favorite, I'll think about it, right? And they run. Okay, so just look. Honestly, yeah, so you recognize this scenario at all? They may not actually run, but their eyes definitely start to glaze over. And you start to feel weird and not know what to do next. So you know, you let some, you like keep talking and they're like, why am I still talking? Maybe you finally just change the subject or you end the conversation. And later you're left thinking, what happened? God, I, they, I thought they were really interested. I don't know what went wrong. Oh, I hate sales, right? So check and see, you've experienced some version of this. And the first thing I want to say is, is for, that is that isn't sales, right? That's the absence of sales. That's what happens when the skills are missing. And the second is, the truth is, you're right. You don't know what went wrong, but only because this just isn't a knowledge base and a skill set that you have yet. Okay. But I'm about to teach you one small skill: what to say when people ask you to tell them more. And like most skills, once you have it, you have it. It's not hard. You don't even have to think about it. It's an ingrained skill in me. It's an, become an ingrained skill in my clients. I've done my skills and arpeggios, right? So I have this skill. So I can just be present with the person, not stuck in my head. So if someone says to me something like, you know, that's interesting. What, what can you tell me about it? Without having to stop and think or get in my own head, I would just naturally say something like, I, I would love to, but first let me ask, what interests you about it? And then I listen. So how many of you could see yourself doing that, right? Just pausing that and asking, instead of launching into, right? Every, all the stuff you could tell them, you pause and you ask that question first and then listen to what they say. Now, that one little skill that you just learned, that's actually step one of five things that you need to do, very, very simple and natural things, when someone asks you to tell them more. All of it, they add up to a very genuine, easy, relaxed conversation that has um, a really like high likelihood of turning into a successful sales conversation and isn't weird for you or them. Right? Now, so I picked this one simple skill to teach you and that really like write that one down. I, I, I love to tell you more. First, let me ask what interests you. 
Um, I picked that because it happens so early on and not having this skill is actually killing off <laughs> your potential possible sales conversations before the event start. Okay. Now, there's a lot of skills involved in heart-centered scales, sales. I'm going to run through them just real quickly just to give you a sense of the breadth of it, but you know, how to start a conversation with a stranger or with someone you know, how to establish rapport, connection with them, and maintain that, and how to reestablish it if you lose it. Because no matter how good you are, there will be times you'll kind of lose that rapport, right? So how do you regain that? How to really listen. Right? How to get referrals effectively from current and past clients. That's like gold in your back, own backyard that you aren't picking up. What kind of questions to ask and when to ask them. How to recognize where the person is in their decision process so you can meet them there. Um, how to help lead to a decision of yes or no. or um, And how to address and resolve objections. How to close in sales parlance. And um, how, to just, how to ask the sale, meaning actually inviting them to work with you, how to build that relationship over time and get amazing testimonials. That's actually part of kind of a sales skill. Um, how to find out what it is that they actually really want so that you can help them get it and build the value of what you offer, how to do follow-up in a way that people will actually thank you for and more. So that's kind of the broad, right? And if you look and you think of that skill I just taught you, the skill of stopping before you launch into anything and say, I'd love to tell you more. What, what interests you about it? If you look, I think you'll see that there's several places that that fits. That, that one skill actually does multiple things for you, right? It helps you listen, right? And see what to listen for. It helps to establish rapport because people like that you're taking the time to find out what interests them, right? It gives you what, it's one of the great questions to ask and a good time to ask it. It helps build relationships. So it helps you see where they are in their decision process. So I want you to see how like just even one skill does multiple things for you. And that's just one technique, one essential skill. And I want you to ask yourself, did you feel like you learned something valuable? Can you see yourself doing that? And does it make sense that just getting that one little skill just knowing what to say can make a huge difference right away. That is something you can literally use today, right? It's really like when you have a skill, um, it really is something that, you know, that we put it this way, you know, they say the best investment is in yourself, right? So when you invest in learning a skill for yourself and you learn these sales skills and you practice them, you're going to have skills that are going to serve you literally for the rest of your life, Okay. So um, that's just one skill, and hopefully you guys can see that just that one thing could make a huge difference for you. Could you see, for ex and, and that's how it will be with uh, all the other skills, okay? It's not magic. It's not like some people are born with it. Um, these are skills that absolutely anyone, including you, can learn and become really, really, really good at authentic and heart-centered sales. I just want to like ground that a little bit more. Can you see that stopping and asking that question, do you see how it would help you feel more present in the moment, right? It keeps you from that thing where you kind of mentally leave. It actually helps you be present. Do you see if you pause and you ask that question that you would actually feel more empowered in the moment, right? And more engaged and connected with the other person because you're finding out what it is that they're really interested in. So that's the power of even just one new skill. And I really want you to get this. The best salespeople in the world have done a lot of training. That's why they're so good. And sure, they may have had some natural ability as well, but they had to learn the skills too. And there is no reason on earth why you can't learn them. Also, it is all learnable and teachable. Right. Remember at the beginning, I said that we're going to uncover what is for most sort of healers, coaches, purpose-driven entrepreneurs, what your fundamental to relationship to sales probably is. So I realized in that moment back in the gas station that I was in total denial about this, <laughs> what we're about to talk, and it had to change. So believe me, I get this, okay? So can you see that if there's an opportunity to sell what you offer, but you don't feel free to be yourself, you're kind of mentally gone, you can't stay in the moment, you feel like to be someone else, and you're also missing the actual skills that the situation needs, the degree to which both of those 
things are true is the degree to which you're stuck in the number one way that I find most healers and coaches relate to sales. And it can actually be summed up the relationship to it. it can be summed up in a single word. And that word is avoidance. Yeah. I find most healers and coaches just don't engage with sales at all if they can avoid it. They'll do just about anything, right? Create another program, enroll in another program, do market research, make another social media post that, um, you know, isn't really dr driving towards sales, right? Just like, oh, let me just post something. Um, do just about and rearrange their home office again, right? Just about anything except pick up the phone and have an actual conversation with a potential client. And I just want to let that sink in because there is a real problem with that because sales is the only part of your business where you actually make money, right? So if this avoidance is at the heart of your relationship to sales, then you're essentially avoiding the only part of your business where you actually make money. And that means you're not really in business and you can't help all the people that you're here to help, right? And I find that's the trap that um, most people are in. It's just so uncomfortable what you do is so personal, right? So without knowing these skills that you could feel good about using, instead it's just scary, it's awkward, and you're so concerned about seeming pushy or salesy that instead you just avoid it, right? So is this resonating with you guys? Can you see the avoidance operating? Can you see that if you've been avoiding the sales part of your business, you've really set yourself up for a lot of frustration and feelings of powerlessness? and no real chance of succeeding and making both the money and the difference that you wanna make, right? So I'm on a mission to change that, <laughs> right? Uh, it's really my mission to help you create a truly thriving, successful, prosperous business doing the work you love to do and helping the people you're here to help. Um, the day my business changed forever, that I went from not being able to fill my tank to what I have now, um, it was the day that I got real with myself, that I had to learn how to sell because no one was going to do it for me. But I had to find a way that worked for me, right? In my experience, most sales training out there in the world is what I call slightly, but not entirely tongue in cheek, um, high testosterone, <laughs> right? Most sales training out there in the world today has a lot of male energy to it. It uses language like overcome their objections. Like literally that's like a chapter in every sales book, how to overcome objections like overcome them. I don't know how about like address them, see if you can resolve them. No, overcome them, right? You know, be a great closer. Get out there and crush it. That's it's just has that's like the traditional language of sales. So if any of you watching are if you've ever done sales training and you learned a few techniques but when you tried them, they just didn't feel like you, they didn't feel authentic. This is quite possibly why, right? I also want to be, I, I want to be really clear. I'm not bashing the guys or male energy. I, I love male energy. I have a lot of it myself. It's valuable. It's useful. It's wonderful. And it's not a fit for heart-centered people, male or female, as our way of connecting with people and inviting them to work with us, right? It's just not a fit, okay? But heart-centered sales is. Fundamentally, male energy is about the transaction, right? And that's important. But people know when someone's trying, think about it, you know, if someone's trying to sell you something and they are putting the transaction is more important than you, right? You can tell that, right? Female energy is about putting the relationship first, about actually putting the relationship before the transaction. And people know when we're doing that too, don't they? Right? And that's what they want. That's what heart-centered sales is all about, right? And I'm here to show you how. So I want to give you an example of how it's not only more fun, but also more effective. So this is Lori. And uh, when she and I first started working together, she was actually doing sales for a company that was her day job. And she was doing okay with it, but she was getting absolutely nowhere with trying to start her energy healing practice. And as a, an aside, some of you may have already had experience that it, sometimes it's much easier to sell other people's stuff than, than it is to sell your own, right? Because it's so personal. So this is what she shared with me after working together. First, she said in her sales job, which is not really why she came to me, but still, um, she said, oh, I can just get on the phone with someone, be myself, 
find out I can help them just so they're trying to fit my square peg into their round hole. And now it's, it's more than doubled her sales on this after our first conversation. Her closing ratio in sales terms was 42% from a single call over 90%. So I was very happy to hear that, but I also said, Lori, but that I, I love that that's happening and that's not why you came. You came about your energy healing practice. So how's that going? And she's like, oh yeah, did I tell you I'm booked out three weeks in advance consistently? <laughs> so that's the power, right? That's the power of learning and getting really grounded in heart-centered sales. So I hope you can see um, that there's a lot more behind what, what I do and teach, like really a mountain of experience and training and honing in on what it is that really works for people like us, that we can feel good and aligned and confident about, right? And does it make sense that if, if what I've taught you here um, can make a big difference? And I'm telling you, if you change nothing else and you just start doing that, oh, I'd love to tell you more, but first, let me ask what interests you about it. If that's the only thing you change, you're going to start to see a difference, Okay. It doesn't make sense that I have more that I can help you with, right? I'd also like to know, you know, you've heard my journey, a lot of what's behind this. Does it make sense that I can't fit, you know, almost 20 years of experience and training into one class, right? So if you would like to have access to more than just this one piece, great, because I have a free gift for you. It is a simple, powerful, and effective way to get started with learning and using heart-centered sales. So do you remember how when I taught you that skill of saying, I I'd love to tell you more, but let me ask what interests you. I said it was step one of five, okay? So if you'd like to get all five, that is the gift that I have for you today. So um, this free copy of my heart sales conversation secrets, heart-centered sales made simple, which you can get right from that link. And that is going to take, start your journey and give you the step by step of how to be able to speak with people about what you do, the amazing gifts that you have in a way that feels natural, that feels authentic, it feels aligned, it's straight from the heart, always putting the relationship first, and is very, very effective at having people choose to sign up and work with you. So that is my gift for all of you. I hope that you found that super, super valuable. And um, I look forward, to, forward to, to hearing from you about the difference that it made for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your journey. First of all, wasn't that story so powerful, at least any every time I've heard it before, but every time it still touches my heart. And then sharing this super powerful way because I totally have done that mistake. <laughs> like, yes, so let me tell you more. We all have. We've all done it. <laughs> and now you can start practicing. And that works on social too. So it yeah. works as a message. So if somebody asks, <laughs> yep. use that line because it is super powerful. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Anne. And thank you for the generous gift. So check it out. Get that gift. And now, as we start wrapping up here, I'm just asking, do you have a final message you, you'd like to leave our audience with? Uh, yeah, I think it really is that um, truly the most important thing, I think, in business and in sales is to be yourself. It really is. That's what people respond to. Um, I like to say that authenticity is as attractive as it is rare, <laughs> right? Um, and it's hard, it truly is hard to just be yourself and like be grounded in the moment when you're, you're being put in a situation where you're like, I don't, I don't know how to handle this. So it's the part of the key to being able to just be yourself and be that authentic self is that you need to get some of those basic skills that are, that are necessary. Right. And it's, it's, it's not as hard as you think. I think a lot of times, especially with salespeople think, oh, I'm going to have to learn these like slimy, awful skills. And that's not me. And mm. it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you want, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to learn these authentic, like heart-based skills so that you can just be you. And that's what really works. Beautiful. Thank you, Anne. Thank you for your time and the valuable insights you shared today. 
And also want to say thank you for tuning in and joining us in this Soulful on Social Summit session. It's time to shine, share and succeed. Until next time, bye for now.